when you're looking for a person, what are you looking for in the person? Um, to me, great personality. Uh, somebody that is, you know, knows what they want out of life and is actively pursuing what they want out of life. Um, I love good, honest human beings. Uh, so it's very attractive to be around somebody that is good to not only me, but other people. Right. So, so in your dating service, mm -hmm. it's called For Him? We like, Find Him. We Find Him. So mm -hmm. you, you match men up together. I match men and women. Mm -hmm. Men and women. Yes. Two women or, or, or male and female? Whoever, everybody. Do you get both? Yes. Uh, all kind of coming to you? Oh, yes, yes. When we first launched, launched our company, um, we launched in Atlanta in 2015. And when we launched in Atlanta in 2015, we had about 125 men and women um, that were in the room. And literally from that day, probably we matched about 20 people that night. Um, so, yeah, we've been just growing and growing since right. then. Mm -hmm. So you matched two men, two women, a man, man and, and a woman. Mm -hmm. um, are you some Pride that men and women come to you looking for men and women, straight men and straight women? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. And why are you not surprised by that? I think because it's all about, you know, who I am and what I represent. You know, I represent love is love um, and that no matter who you are, what you are, you deserve some form of love. And how would you define love? Love is a feeling um, and an emotion that makes you feel great and it makes you feel like you're worthy. And so... Is it a fake thing or is it real? It's real. Love Why real. doesn't it stay with you if it's real? As far as in a person? Yeah. I don't, I, think you, I don't think you can control that. I feel like if it's meant to be, it will be. Um, but just because somebody does something to you does not mean they didn't love you. Really? Mm hmm So have you ever been in love with someone? Yeah. And then once you got with them, it changed? I think the emotional aspect of like being in love with them may have changed but as far as like my love and care for them that didn't change and I think there's a difference that people need to understand so being in love is fake no being in love is real but why did that change I think it depending on what the person you know how you guys are matched together or or how the vibe is the vibe can change and the energy can change there may be something that person does to you to make you realize like I'm not in love with this person anymore but I still care about them are you surprised that straight men and women don't have a problem with your service because you put men together and women, mm. women on women? No, I'm not surprised. And, and why not? I think, like I said before, it's all about your aura and who you are. I think because I'm such a great person, I like to think I'm a great person, <laughs> uh, that, you know, they know that what I'm doing is honest and it's great. And, you know, like I said, love is love. It's for everybody. Are you surprised that two men would want to get do get married and all that kind of stuff? No, I'm not surprised. You're not? And why aren't you surprised at that? Because I feel like everybody deserves love. But for two men or two women to get married, it's not <clears throat> real. It's like a made-up idea. Is it? Right. No, I don't think that. But real man, a real marriage between a male and female, mm -hmm. right? That's the real deal. Everything so what's your what is your definition of, mar of, what is your definition of marriage? Uh, if we're between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. So, and they do it under the umbrella of God, okay. male and female, right? Everything else is like a false invitation of the real thing. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, you know that, right? No. You don't know that? No, because I believe that in the Bible that I read, the New Testament that I read, I, love is love and God is love. So why can't two people of the same sex love each other? But that kind of love is not real. It's not the real. It's based on sex. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Based on like the sexual interaction? Yeah. I don't think so. Why, why don't, don't you think so? Because, I mean, even for the people that I match, primarily the conversation isn't about sex. The conversation more so is about the mind, the interaction, the vibe, not necessarily a sexual interaction. So when you, you think that when people get together, mm -hmm. they're thinking about each other's mind? I think that when you think about something long term, you can't have sex any and everywhere, so there has to be something additional to the relationship outside of sex. Even with, uh, uh, whenever I dated a woman, mm -hmm. I didn't think about her mind. <laughs> what? I was thinking about sex. The whole time? We'll deal with the mind later. Uh huh. But the, what drew me to her was the sex. My type of woman, mm -hmm. I can have sex with this woman. I didn't care about the mind. Really? When did people start caring about the mind? I think that they should when you think about marriage. When so you think when, about uh, like 
for a commitment forever. Were you married to the woman that you thought about? No, because it was just about sex. So when I look at a woman, you think I'm thinking, wow, I wonder what her mind is like. Yeah, don't you think about the empire that you can build together? The, the Maybe later down the road, if mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, we do our thing, if I decide I want to marry So you're saying the initial... The initial thing is about sex. About, mm. Isn't that true? I don't think that is for everybody. Really? Yeah, I think at a certain age, I feel like if you've had enough sex at a certain age, that's not the first thing you think about when you meet somebody. What is the first thing you think about? It's like for some people, it is. <laughs> like, what, what can this person offer me? What can I offer this person? That's like, one taking care of her? Even if it's beyond taking care of her, what can you build together? When you uh, put you put men together, women, and all that, mm -hmm. what what type of clients do you? Uh, what's the difference between black men getting together and white men getting together? Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between the two races? How they see things? How they think? No, I don't think so. I think that in LA, what I find interesting though is a lot of um, like a lot of the beautiful black women that I talk to. You know, it's very hard for them to find love from a black man in L.A. Yeah. I feel like um, a lot of black men in L.A., I went to a panel discussion um, last year, and one of the black men spoke about why it's easier for him to date a woman um, of a different race. Right. And he was saying that women of different races seem to be more approachable than black women. And I had this conversation with a lot of my, my female friends, and they're like, you know, it depends on where you're at. In LA, um, black men have that mentality, but if you go to like a Charlotte, if you go to in Atlanta, you go to a Miami, you know, black men are more aggressive there. Here, they're not as aggressive, a yeah, lot of women think. That's true. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what would that guy reason for dating outside of his race? Do you um, remember what he said? Oh, he said specifically that the women that approach him, they approach him. He doesn't approach women. So if he's in a club and he's standing there and he makes eye contact with a woman of a, of a different ethnicity that's not black, you know, she'll walk up and approach him. Right. But if it's a black woman, it's more like a, you know, they're exchanging looks and nobody's really budging. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny. Which I find that to be very interesting. Yeah, that is. One of the reasons that black men leave or don't date black women, especially here or big cities, is because black women are like bitches now. What? Yeah, and, and, and the men don't know how to deal with that because mm -hmm. they never dealt with their mothers in the right way. Mm -hmm. And now these black women are becoming educated, and the more educated they are, the more of a bitch they become. Oh, my goodness. And the guys just don't want to be bothered with that. Have mm -hmm. you noticed that? No, not necessarily. I feel like the You more, haven't noticed that they become bitches? No, I feel like the more educated they become, the, the more, more of a bitch they are. <laughs> no, the more value. To me, the more valuable they are in the relationship. In what way? They can add to the household. Add yeah, hell, more hell. <laughs> are you are you married? No. I see why. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I've noticed that women with degrees don't make for good wives and good mothers. That's what I always tell guys: don't marry a woman with a degree. She's a bitch. You you would tell somebody that? I tell them that all the time. I am completely one hundred percent appalled, and I do not agree with that one bit. Why I feel not? Like, because I feel like a woman with a degree can add so much value to being a mother and being a wife. Because what can she add to the household? With that degree, she can add income. With that degree, she can add responsibility. With that degree, she can take some of those burdens off of your back and put those on her back. But with that degree, I don't want her to take any of that off me. Mm -hmm. I want her to be my wife, have my children, watch over my children when I'm out providing. Mm -hmm. I want her to be a woman. Not to take anything away from me. So wait a minute. Women don't... So in your mindset, women don't... Shouldn't be educated? Right. What about your da What about daughters? What about... If they plan on becoming a wife and a mother, they shouldn't be educated. So they, but if they're never going to get married, they just want to... They got to take care of themselves. I have no problem with that. But in order to be a good wife and a mother, they... Because it builds their ego, and they start to feel like they are better than the male. What year are you in? It's 2021. These women are out here being mothers, wives, I know, that's judges, why lawyers. No, a lot of them are married. Yeah, but the man is a beta. Beta. <laughs> <laughs> what is a beta man? One that can't deal with a woman in the right way, his wife, or mm -hmm. stay home and let the woman go to work, can't speak up for himself, and be an independent person, love what's right and do the right thing. So do you think that men can't be stay-at-home fathers? Do you think that's something against that? Any man that's stay-at-home father is mm -hmm. a beta male. Really? He's, he's really? a woman. Really? Yeah. 
that you're not supposed to switch roles like that. Mm -hmm. That's abnormal. Why is it abnormal if, if, if the wife is like a, a Supreme Court justice and she's, you know, the household is taken care of, but she needs somebody in there helping with the children and stuff like she that? She needs to be in there. It's a God-given role for her to be there. Really? Being a Christian, you agree to that, right? No, absolutely not. Why not? Because what about women pastors? I have several women. My aunt is one of my favorite pastors. <laughs> no. Don't tell them. <laughs> Don't tell it. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> women can't be pastors. Uh uh. Why? Because it's not in their nature to lead. Women were created to follow. Men wow. were created to lead. Wow. Have you noticed that? In 2021. Yeah. Look how messed up everything. Anytime the woman takes over, the world goes to hell in a handbasket. What it? What, what, what Look at the children when the father leads the home. The kids become bastard cases that. because the mother doesn't have it in her to lead them. That, Have you noticed that? N absolutely not. That, that absolutely not. When my dad left the household, my brothers and I are very successful men and do very well for ourselves. And my mother did a great job leading us into becoming great men. But having things doesn't make you a man. What make, having what doesn't make you a man? Things. Absolutely not. It's, it's the way you carry yourself. What, being what successful you, doesn't make you a man. It's the way you carry yourself. It's, it's the way you handle business. It's the way you, you, the world perceives you. It's the way that you perceive yourself. It's the energy that you give. There are several things that make you a man. No, what makes you a man is to become, to return to the Father and become a son of God. That's what makes you a man. That doesn't stop. I know, but you're, you're, you're developing into a man, and your character is based on the principles of God. And nothing else. So you think that when you get to the gates of heaven, do you honestly think that God is going to say, you're not a man, you're not a man, you're not a man, you're not a man, get out? Absolutely. He ain't going to let you in. He won't have to say get out. He's not going to let you in. He won't open the gate. That's crazy. But, God, I serve, going to let me in. Do you hook up Christian people to, together? Absolutely. Everybody. Yeah. Muslims, everybody. Really? Yeah. Um, and they don't question the fact that you put two men together. What happens in a man's mind? Because you're an executive matchmaker, mm -hmm. right? What happens in a man's mind? I know that we all born in sin, mm -hmm. so we got this mess to clean up, right? Mm -hmm. We get into, as a result of being born in sin, we get into trying to find peace. Mm -hmm. So we get into all kind of mess. And in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, it was an embarrassment to be in your mess. You would never promote it as good. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't tell anyone about it. You'd go to God to overcome it, right? What happened to men that they are taking their mess and promoting it as good? What what happened to a mindset like that? Look, what what are you what are you what are you saying is mess? Like when two men want to get together as a mm -hmm. husband and a wife, when two less lesbian want to get together as a husband and wife. That's not where mess. did the shame go that these people are promoting a sin as though it's a good black people used to be embarrassed by that. White people used to be at one point. Where did the shame go? Where They're not that? embarrassed anymore, you think? Some are. Some mm -hmm. are not. Mm -hmm. But a lot are. So what, what I, th happens I, think, I think we... In we, the mindset of the male, what happened that they think it's okay to promote that? I think that we're in a time where you just mind your own business. Meaning and what? You, you focus on what makes you happy, the love that makes you happy, the things that you want to do in life, and not worry about the next person. I think that that's where we are in life. Not worrying about who or what. I don't care who you sleep with. Right. I don't care who, you, who you're laying next to at night. I don't care. I know, but it's not about, it's not necessarily about what others think about it, right? Mm -hmm. In the good old days, it used to be about what the person thought about it. They knew that they were wrong, that they had an issue, right? Mm -hmm. And they would quietly overcome that issue rather than promoting it as a good. You know what? As long as the person is good, I think that's all that should matter. Do you recommend to your client that they have sex before marriage? I feel like as adults, um, I don't feel like nobody's came to me yet that's a virgin. Really? Um, so I feel like for me, I always promote getting to know the person before you engage in any type of sexual aspect. Because sex can complicate it will. a relationship. You don't really know who you're with. Once you have sex with them, you lose reality of who that person is. That's a possibility. And also, I, f I feel like it can distract you from a lot of things when you have sex with somebody too yeah. prematurely.